Our last video focuses on acceleration, and acceleration can be very challenging, so I encourage you to put a little extra time into making sure you really understand what acceleration tells you about motion. When we're looking at one dimension, acceleration is telling me basically uh, whether an object is speeding up or slowing down. So we're increasing our, our speed or, decrease, or decreasing our speed. But as soon as we get to two dimensions, acceleration can also include turning. So the speed might remain constant while the object turns, or the direction might remain constant while the object changes speeds. Formally, acceleration is the change in velocity, or really how quickly the velocity changes. So acceleration is how quickly the velocity changes. So the delta v is how much it changes, divided by delta t, how much time it takes. That tells you how quickly the velocity changes. So let's look at an example. This picture is a strobe image. A strobe is in a, a strobe photo where uh, you, you flash a light a whole bunch of times and take a picture each time it flashes. So this is a drawing of that showing the position of a car each time the image is taken. And you can see that in, in each one of these images, which are taken an equal amount of time apart, let's say each one of them is one second apart, so the first one is time zero, and then you have one second and two seconds and three seconds and four seconds. The object is moving at the same speed. The arrow here is indicating how fast the object is moving. And you can also see that the distance that it's traveled in between each image is the same. The delta x in between each one second is the same. That means the velocity is the same for each one of those uh, time slices, and that means the object isn't accelerating. So if acceleration is the am amount the velocity changes divided by the amount of time it takes, and the velocity doesn't change, then it doesn't matter how much time it is, the acceleration is zero. In this next example, I have a positive acceleration. You can see the, the strobe photo showing the position of the object at time zero, at one second, at two seconds, 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 three seconds, and four seconds. And you can see that the displacement of the object in between each one of those is changing. So in the first one, you've got a certain distance that it's traveled, and then you have a slightly larger distance that it's traveled in the next second a slightly larger distance again in the third second, and a slightly larger distance again in the fourth second. So because the displacement is increasing in each second, that means the velocity is increasing. So if acceleration is how much the velocity changes divided by how much time it takes, that indicates that the velocity is going up. So you have a positive change in velocity divided by the amount of time it takes, and you get a positive acceleration, positive acceleration. In our next example, we have the opposite going on. We have in the very first second, we've got time zero, time one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. And you can see in that first second, it travels a large distance, and then a smaller distance, and then a smaller distance again, and then a smaller distance again. That indicates the speed is decreasing. So if acceleration is the velocity change divided by the amount of time, Again, I'll write that equation down. And the change in velocity is negative divided by the four seconds. You have a negative acceleration. That happens whenever the velocity, um, the object will slow down whenever the acceleration points in an opposite direction to the velocity. And then just like we looked at graphs of position and velocity before, I want to talk about the relationship between acceleration graphs and velocity graphs. So the idea with these six graphs is I want to match them up. The bottom three, uh, oops, uh, the bottom three graphs are all accelerations, showing acceleration versus time. And the top three are all velocity versus time. So this is showing at one instance the velocity is such and such, at this time it's a different velocity. So I want to find a relationship between those. 
So let's start with the simplest acceleration graph. That's this one where the acceleration is constant. This graph, graph E, is showing that, that at each instant the acceleration is the same. It doesn't change. So if the acceleration is constant, not changing, that means in every instant of time the object should change its velocity by the same amount. Well, let's look up at these graphs. In which one of these three graphs is the velocity changing by the same amount in each instant of time? So in this one it goes up and then it goes up again. Notice that it's gone up by the same amount and then it goes up again and up again. You can see that the gaps are exactly the same size. This one has a constant acceleration. So those two go together, A and E. Because the, the acceleration is constant, not changing, that means the velocity is increasing at a steady rate. All right, now let's talk about um, F down here. This one, again, for the first chunk, has a constant acceleration, meaning the acceleration is not changing, so the velocity should be increasing at a steady rate. And then the acceleration changes to zero. If the acceleration is zero, that means the velocity is not changing. Which one of these graphs shows, of these two, shows a velocity that's not changing for some time. Well, that's this one. The velocity is constant during that second chunk of time, and that matches up with when the acceleration changes to zero. So those two go together, that one and that one. So clearly that shows that D and B go together because those are the only ones left, but we can think about this uh, a little more and say, okay, well, if the acceleration is increasing at a steady rate, that means that how quickly the velocity changes is changing. This graph shows that in the first chunk of time the velocity goes up a little bit, in the next instant of time the velocity goes up more, in the next instant of time the velocity goes up even more, in the next instant of time the velocity goes up even more. So that one is showing that where the acceleration is increasing, so the velocity is changing how quickly it changes at a steady rate. So acceleration and velocity and position are, are three quantities that relate to the describing the motion of an object. Uh, it's important as you do the reading that you, you pay careful attention to those definitions and you think about how to use them to understand the problems that we're working on. Uh, this is definitely a section where people end up getting confused and that's very natural. So what I want you to do is do the reading start working on the problems, and make sure that you ask questions throughout the week. Don't wait until next Monday to start working on that, that assignment. Do it as soon as possible so you can ask questions on Thursday or Friday at the latest.